Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Ecumenical Key Guide. Ecumenical Keys are only obtainable in the Wilderness God Wars Dungeon, and they can be used to skip the 40 or less KC that you need to enter one of the regular God Wars Dungeon boss rooms. They can also high alk for a little over 60k, making them not a bad option for Iron Man money making. In this guide, I'm going to be going over the requirements and recommendations for collecting ecumenical keys, then the gear and inventory setup that you can be bringing with you. Afterwards, we'll discuss how to travel to the Wilderness God Wars dungeon, then what to kill when to collect ecumenical keys when you get there, and finally, we'll go over a new method that'll be coming into the game soon through ecumenical key shards. There's really not a lot of requirements for getting to the God Wars dungeon out in the wilderness, so a lot of the stuff in this section is just recommended. Uh, there are two different shortcuts as you enter the dungeon that you need to cross one of them. Similar to the actual God Wars dungeon, you're going to need either 60 agility or 60 strength to get in. Not both, just 60 in either of them. Also, just like the actual God Wars dungeon, each monster in the dungeon is going to be aggressive towards you unless you wear a piece of gear dedicated to the god that they represent. This can be a little bit more tricky when you're setting up for the wilderness God Wars dungeon since you can get PK'd in there and you don't want to wear very expensive gear. That's what the gear section of this video is going to be for, going over the options for the four different pieces of god equipment. The combat achievements can also help out with ecumenical key grinding. The hard elite, master, and grandmaster rewards each lower the drop rate of an ecumenical key starting at 1 in 60 and eventually only being a 1 in 40 if you manage those grandmaster tasks. You don't need to go super deep into the combat achievements for this to be helpful. Even just those hard diaries giving a 1 in 55 chance is very helpful if you plan on getting a lot of keys. The Wilderness Hard and Elite Diaries can give you some helpful benefits when collecting ecumenical keys. You can only have three ecumenical keys at a time, not just in your inventory, but all together, only three keys. If you do the Wildy Hard Diaries, you can have up to four keys, and if you do the Wildy Elites, you can have up to five keys at a time. Also, the Wildy Hard Diaries give the ability to choose where you teleport when you're using those Wilderness Obelisks, which can be very helpful for traveling out to the Wilderness God Wars dungeon. Let's talk about that gear setup now. Remember, the entire Wilderness God Wars dungeon is in the wilderness, so you can be PK'd. Anything you bring out there is being risked. Uh, you do get to save three items if you're not Skulled, and it's pretty much impossible at this point to get Skull Tricked. So you can bring three expensive items if needed. Other than that, don't bring anything too high of value. To be completely protected, you will need to wear a piece of equipment from each of the four gods, Ceredomen, Zamrak, Bandos, and Armadil. It is possible to avoid the Armadil section of the Wilderness God Wars dungeon, so you could ignore that piece of gear, but sometimes the Avancies, they move a little bit too far, so it is worth bringing the Arma piece of gear anyways. If you plan on using the 60 Strength shortcut to get in, not the 60 Agility, that entrance is going to lead right through the Avancies, and you'll definitely need an Armadil piece. Let's go over each option for each of the god pieces. As you can see, there is a lot of pieces of gear that you can pick from, so let's try to narrow that down a little bit. We'll start with Ceredomen, which is a very easy decision. The monk's robe top or bottom are each like 300 coins on the GE, and as an Iron Man, you could just go pick one up yourself on the first floor of the Edgeville Monastery, as long as you have 31 or more prayer. This makes it very easy to get more if you lose it when you get PK'd, plus you have two different slots to use here, so if you've already filled your chest or legs, you can fill the other with the monk's robes. If for any reason you can't use the monk's robe bottom or monk's robe top, a holy symbol is very cheap and also very easy to obtain. Next we have Zamrak, which is very similar to Ceredomen. The unholy symbol is your cheapest option being like three four hundred coins the zamorak robes also are very cheap the robe bottoms being more expensive than the robe top they're not quite as easy to obtain as just picking them off off the ground like the monks robes but you can get them yourself by killing monks of zamorak which are very weak this gives three options of zamorak items that are all much cheaper and easier to obtain than any of those clue items or like zamorak weapons the Bandos item is not quite as simple as the last two. Uh, just about every Bandos item is either a drop from the Bandos boss or an item from Clue Scrolls. A lot of those items are very cheap though, a lot of the Clue Scroll items I should say, so if you're not an Iron Man, the Bandos weapon is pretty easy. If you plan on using a one-handed weapon, the Book of War is a fantastic option for the shield slot. The Bandos book is pretty cheap to complete, but you don't even have to complete the book apparently to at least count as a god-affiliated item. You're not going to get any of the stats out of the Book of War or any of the other books, but it really doesn't matter. You're not wearing it for the stats you're just wearing it to be a god item uh, there is a book for each of the gods uh, the reason that the bandos book or the book of war comes up is really all of the other gods just have like an easy item to get if you're a main and you're just buying your items in the ge it doesn't really matter much but as an iron man a bandos item can definitely be a little bit more of a pain so the book of war not a bad option a couple of other items like the books that there is at least one for every god you have the halos in the last man standing reward shop uh, this really is just for an Iron Man if you find, like, no way to get a Banos item. This is one that really doesn't require any RNG. And of course there are blessings. Uh, most of the blessings are very cheap. The most expensive blessing, being the unholy blessing, is like 100k. But just use an unholy symbol instead of an unholy blessing for your Zamrak item, and you do get to avoid that. Overall, the blessings are pretty cheap. They're a clue item, so as an Iron Man, not, or like, a guaranteed option, but... 
overall, it is an option that's out there. The Ancient Mace also counts as a Bandos item. It's obtained from another slice of ham quest. You can also get one back for only 1k from the Cave Goblin Tegdak in Dorgish Khan. They're very easy to obtain overall. If you do use this, that does mean you're limited to a weak weapon. It's weaker than a Mithril Mace, but if you focus on just killing the imps, that's really not going to matter that much. Other cheap tradable Bandos items include the Bandos Stole and the Bandos Miter. You usually see me rocking my trusty Bandos Coif that I got from a clue way back when. Finally, we have the Armadil item. Again, Arm is not needed. If you use the 60 agility method to get into the caves, you can avoid the Arma area. You could accidentally wander over to the area, and honestly, the Avon Seas, they get a bit too close to the Imps sometimes, so you're better off just bringing this item. The easiest Armadil item to obtain is the Armadil Pendant, which is a reward from the Temple of Icov quest, and can be reobtained for no fee from the same Armadil guard you got it from the first time. After that, the Armadil Stole and the Armadil Cloak are both very cheap. We're going to move on to what weapon to bring now, but I have linked in the description the wiki's full list of items that can be used as god equipment. The most common strategy when you're in there is just to be killing implings, or at least fighting things that are at low health, so a good weapon is not extremely important. A fast and accurate weapon is going to make a difference in your key hunting, though. That's why the toxic blowpipe is definitely the most common option here. You can tag a bunch of NPCs quickly and pound out kills very easily with a toxic blowpipe. It is a two-handed weapon, so keep that in mind if you plan on bringing a shield, like a godbook, for instance. Plus, if you're using the blowpipe, you should either bring some cheap darts that you don't mind losing, or wear one of the cheap Ava's devices, or any of them that you don't mind getting another one back. That is going to take up your cape slot if you plan on using a cloak or another god item in that slot though. The whip is a fine one-handed weapon to get the job done. If anything, it's a bit overkill for melee. You could very easily do this with a dragon skimmy or even the rune skimmy and you won't be able to tell that much of a difference. This is not bossing, you're killing weak monsters for these keys. Using a weapon that is affiliated to a boss can very much be a bonus, since it narrows down the amount of gear that you're bringing with you. This tends to not matter much when the gear you're bringing is already very cheap. You could bring extra gear if you lose something that's worth like 300 coins. It's probably not that big of a deal. I already brought up earlier, you could use the Ancient Mace as your weapon, which is a Bandos weapon. Uh, for the Armadil, you could have an Armadil Crossbow, which is a bit slow for this task. But also there's the Crossbow, which is a bit pricey to use, but so is the Toxic Blowpipe. Both Ceridoman and Zamorak have an ornament kit for the Rune Skimmy, which actually makes it count for one of their items, which is very nice for how cheap it is. Uh, there's a lot of weapon options out there, and you could even just kick most of the monsters to death, since they're going to be weak and already near death. So you don't have to fuss too much about exactly which weapon to use, but I do prefer to use the Toxic Blowpipe. So here's the setup that I bring with me. I've got the Monk's Robe Bottoms for my Sarah item, the Zamorak Robe Top, the Armadil Pendant, and the Bandos Coif, and I am using a Blowpipe. I will often bring just whatever darts are already in the blowpipe when I take it out of the bank just because I'm lazy about it, but you really don't need to go any higher than mithril darts if you don't want to. Your max hit does not need to be very high for this. If you still have any questions about gear, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. Now for the inventory, which is very straightforward. You really don't need any food or prayer when you're fighting the NPCs. As long as you have god gear on you, you're not going to be taking any damage. Also, if you're not bringing any risk with you, you don't really need to bother with healing and trying to escape from PKers. I do bring that simple, like, PKer set every time that I'm going out into the wildy for an extended period of time. I grab the two brews, super restore, and a stamina to attempt running away. The risk factor is very low here, though. It's more of an annoyance than anything when you're getting PK'd. It does slow you down, so... I would say that is annoying. If you're using range, you could bring ranging potions, and if you're using melee, you could use attack and strength potions. You're fighting weak monsters, so it's not going to make a huge difference, but technically you are going to get more kills per hour if you have higher levels. The rest of the inventory is just the teleports for getting there and then getting out. Your teleport to arrive may differ, and we're going to discuss that in the next section. I highly suggest the Royal Seed Pod for teleporting back out, as it works up to level 30 wilderness, and it's a one-click option. If you haven't done Monkey Madness 2, you could also bring any Dragonstone jewelry, like an Amulet of Glory, which can teleport you out up to level 30 wilderness. The Slayer Ring can also teleport you out at level 30 or lower wilderness. If you bring anything else to teleport out of there, you are going to have to leave the dungeon to get to level 20 or lower wilderness, as the lowest level you can get to in the dungeon is level 23. Now let's talk about getting to the Wilderness God Wars dungeon. This dungeon spot on the map at level 28 Wilderness is how you get in. When you enter this cave, you're going to be sent into a small room with two different entrances to the dungeon, one of them requiring 60 strength, the other one requiring 60 agility. To get to the cave, there are a couple of methods. The most helpful I find is just being the obelisk right outside the caves. If you have the Wilderness Hard Diaries done, you can choose which obelisk to teleport to, and you can travel to this one easily from either your obelisk in your home or the one right outside the corpse lair, which can be teleported to with a games necklace. If you don't have the diaries done, the obelisk teleports you to a random different obelisk, which is almost useless. If you're not using the obelisk, there's a couple of teleport options. A graveyard teleport on the Archaea spellbook is actually very close, but does require 71 magic. There is a 
Dariac teleport in the ancient spell book that's a little bit further away and also requires 78 magic and obviously desert treasures so it's not quite as convenient. The burning amulet does have a teleport to the bandit camp just south of the dungeon. Those are pretty cheap and very easy to obtain. Alright so you're set on gear, inventory, and you've made it out to the wilderness god wars dungeon. Now what to fight? First of all, if you didn't bring an Armadillo item, make sure you avoid the northwestern part of the dungeon. That's where all the Avancies are, and you'll get messed up if you go there. Sometimes one Avancy might snag you when you're trying to KO these imps, but it's really not that big of a deal. Every single monster in here has the same chance to drop an ecumenical key. It's 1 in 60 unless you've completed your hard or even higher level combat achievement diaries. Once you've gotten a key, it is highly recommended to just go bank it, not to risk the key. Uh, there used to be a 2 minute timer where you couldn't get an ecumenical key drop right after you just got one. This timer no longer exists, so you don't have to worry about getting back to back key drops, or rather not getting them. There's a few impling spawns in the Wilderness God Wars dungeon. They're by far the most common monster to kill. They only have 10 health, so they die pretty quickly. The fastest way to get ecumenical keys is to just pop the three implings as quick as possible, see if they drop a key, and hop worlds if they don't. You only need to camp a couple of worlds for this method since they don't take too long to respawn, so you try and hover on the same few worlds to not overlap with other players. It is a competition out there. You're going to see a lot of other players. Not only is it going to be inconvenient when you're running into more players, but it's also increasing your chance of getting PK'd if you're hopping a lot and seeing more people. So it kind of helps to stay in the same worlds. Overall, it's random when you see people and when you see PKers, to be fair. Imps are really not the only weak monster in the Wildy God Wars dungeon. They are consistently the easiest to kill. But for instance, Ice Fiends, Pyre Fiends, and Goblins, they're walking around without very much health, so you could KO those very quickly too. Plus, most of the monsters in the cave are just fighting each other, so you could just eyeball really any NPC that happens to have low health and KO it quickly to see if you get another key. The Spiritual Mages are a nice one to keep your eye out for if you happen to have 83 Slayer to kill them. Uh, if they're at low health, you can snipe them pretty quickly. And they have a chance to drop those Dragon Boots, which are not extremely expensive, but it would be nice to add a quick 250k to your grind if you do spot a Spiritual Mage at that low health. This isn't a bad place to do a Spiritual Mage Slayer task if you're up for it to add some ecumenical keys to your bank. I don't suggest fighting a lot of Spiritual Mages if you're looking for some keys, just rather if you see them close to death, you could snipe some boots quick possibly. It really is as simple as that, you're mostly just looking to snipe the imps, anything else at low health, anytime you get a key, go ahead and bank the key, come back out here and get another one. Remember, you can only have up to three keys at a time, four keys if you've completed the Wilderness Hard Diaries, and five keys at a time if you've completed the Wilderness Elite Diaries. So just like if you're trying to get a clue, and maybe you happen to already have a clue in the bank when you go to check, uh, if you already have too many ecumenical keys in your bank, you're not going to be able to get an ecumenical key drop. So the premise of this guide was collecting the ecumenical keys in the Wilderness God Wars dungeon, but we do have a new method of getting keys being added to the game that is worth mentioning. Next, the fifth God Wars dungeon boss will be released in a couple of weeks, and one of the next rewards is going to be ecumenical key shards. Apparently, 50 key shards can be turned into an ecumenical key, and these shards are going to be sackable. I imagine what this is going to mean is you could just do a bunch of necks, collect like a few thousand shards, and basically have a ton of keys in your bank, which is going to be a different strategy for getting ecumenical keys. This is not going to change how any of the mechanics in the Wilderness God Wars dungeon works for keys, so all of this information will still be very relevant if you're trying to grind out keys through the Wilderness God Wars dungeon. There's no doubt though I will be testing out next myself and making some videos on the new boss, and I will be discussing how good or how not good getting ecumenical key shards turns out to be. I believe that's everything I had for you when it comes to my ecumenical key guide everybody. If you still have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed the video or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, currently scheduled for 6 days a week. That should be linked on the screen and in the description. I am also on Twitter and have a Discord which are also linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching this ecumenical key guide everybody and best of luck with your ecumenical key grind. Yeah.